My name is Daisy, and I'm 26 years old. My story is something I'd never have guessed could happen in real life. The kind of thing you'd expect to see only in movies. Sometimes you have to get unlucky in life to get lucky. Let me start by introducing my ex-husband, Ezra. Ezra and I met in an unusual way. I was out with my friends having a good time at a restaurant, and Ezra was our waiter. I found him really cute, and one of my friends, thanks to a bit too much alcohol, decided to let Ezra know that I was interested. Ezra grabbed my number, and we started getting to know each other better. It turned out there was more to Ezra's story. He had a single mom, Karen, and they were both working like crazy, juggling all sorts of jobs just to make ends meet. But you know what? I didn't judge him based on that. I admired him and his mom for their hard work and determination. They were making it work against the odds. Things moved pretty fast, and within a year of dating, we decided to get married. Maybe it seemed a bit quick, but Ezra treated me like a princess with all he had, and Karen was nothing but sweet to me. Even my parents gave us their blessings. Looking back now, I wish I could have seen it sooner. It all seemed too good to be true. Ezra used to live with his mom, but shortly after our wedding, we found our own apartment, financed with my money. At the time, I didn't have an issue with it. We were a team. Ezra was still working as a waiter while juggling various side gigs. Both of us chipped in for our household expenses. Admittedly, I contributed a bit more, but as long as he was trying his best, it didn't matter to me. I spent most of my time at home since my job allowed remote work, while Ezra headed to work, sometimes even on weekends. One day, Ezra came up to me and said he wanted to talk about something. Hey babe, can we talk about something? Of course, what's up? You know, my mom's been having a tougher time lately. She's getting older, and managing the household by herself has become harder for her. Oh yeah, poor Karen. Yeah. I mean she's struggling with a few things, bills and all. I was thinking, would it be possible for you to send her some money? You know I'm saving up for the business. Well yeah, how much are we talking about? Not too much, just to help her out, maybe $600 for now. Yeah, absolutely. Initially, I thought it was a one-time thing. Sending over $600 wasn't a major concern, so I went ahead and transferred the money into her bank account. But then I realized this was just the tip of the iceberg. Karen started asking for money way more frequently, groceries, electricity bills, you name it. If there was an expense, she'd reach out for cash. I was her emergency contact when she needed to go to the flea market because she would make me pay for it. She even began taking me to stores like Target to buy appliances and stuff for her home. She started buying things she didn't even need. It was getting seriously out of hand. I brought this up with Ezra, hoping he would say something to Karen, but he explained that he found it hard to say no to his mom. The problem was that I was essentially taking care of two households. I had my own financial goals, like saving up for a house or maybe a new car down the line. The need to save was crucial, so I had to make a move. I called Karen up. Hey Karen, how are you? I'm very well, dear. I was just watering the herb pots in the kitchen, you know. Yeah, it's important to keep them all fresh. Tell me about yourself. When are you coming to see me? I've been missing you. We could go have a day out and have some fun. About that, I've been meaning to talk to you about something, Karen. Yes, my darling, what is it? So I've been helping out with money, you know, covering groceries and bills, but to be honest, I can't keep doing that anymore. Wait, what? Does Ezra know about this? He's the one who asked you to help me out. Yeah, I get that. But I also have to think about my future, like saving up for stuff, you know. Seriously? So now my needs do not matter. Asking for help isn't exactly fun for me either, Karen. It's not like that. I'm not saying your needs don't matter, but I can't keep throwing money around. This is unbelievable. Ezra told me you take care of me, and now you're changing your tune. It's not about abandoning anyone. So if you're just going to ditch me when I need help. No, Karen, that's not it. I've helped out loads, but I can't mess up my own financial situation. And I have to be honest, I've noticed some things too. Like buying that microwave when the old one was perfectly fine. And on those trips to Target, you love it up on stuff that you don't even need. We end up in expensive restaurants and malls in the name of spending quality time. And I end up paying for it every time. Well, I deserve to treat myself sometimes. You're just a selfish woman, Daisy. You're just like all those other people who turn their backs when things get tough. Well, you know what? Don't bother helping at all then. 
I don't need your selfishness in my life. And then she just hung up on me. I tried calling Karen multiple times, and I even got Ezra to give it a shot. When he finally got through to her, she straight up told him she didn't want to talk to me unless I was still handing out cash. I was genuinely shocked. It felt like she was just using me, like our relationship only mattered if I was giving her money. It felt like I was just a walking ATM to her. I found it really disrespectful, so I talked with Ezra. I told him that if she had such conditions to talk to me again, I didn't want to engage with her at all. I cut her out of my life just like that. Ezra still went to visit her, but she never bothered coming over to our place. Life moved forward, but after seeing her true colors, I wasn't exactly prepared for what came next. One day, Ezra went out to grab some pizza for dinner and left his phone behind. That thing started ringing non-stop. Normally, I wouldn't snoop around on his phone, and he didn't check mine either. We had this unspoken understanding. But I don't know what got into me that day. Curiosity, I guess. Thank goodness for that moment of curiosity because when I picked up his phone, it was lighting up with calls from this person named Sally. If memory serves me right, Sally was his ex. I was beyond mad. How could Ezra be doing this, staying in touch with his ex and not telling me about it? My mind was racing. What else could they be up to? Were they hooking up behind my back? I took a deep breath, tried to calm down, and opened his phone. First, I checked if they had been texting each other. Nope, not a single text. Then I went ahead and checked their call history. There was nothing there either, no outgoing calls, just the ones he recently received. So I thought I was overthinking it. Maybe Sally had some kind of emergency and needed to get in touch with Ezra. Yeah, that made sense. But I couldn't be sure. I knew I could have just straight up asked him about this mess. Instead, I took down Sally's number on my phone and waited for Ezra to get back. He showed up with dinner, and I kept my cool, acting like everything was peachy. But I didn't sleep at all that night. I had no clue how to handle this whole situation. Should I confront Ezra? Should I confront Sally? I was so stuck. So I figured, why not drop Sally a text from my phone just to see what's what? Hey, is this Sally? Yeah, who's this? I'm Daisy. I guess you might know me as Ezra's wife if you're aware he has one. Oh yeah, I know. What's up? You were calling Ezra yesterday. What for? Oh, nothing much. I just wanted to know if Ezra was free today. I thought he could babysit Connor for the day. I had some plans. Connor? Connor who? Our kid. Didn't you know? I hope this is a sick joke you're playing on me. Oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. He hasn't told you. Not a word. Wow. Yeah, we have a child together. It makes sense why he never let me come over. He told me you knew about this and didn't want me or Connor anywhere near you. I'm sorry he did you dirty. Are you there? I can't believe this. Thanks for letting me know. I couldn't believe what I had just read. I was completely shaking. I couldn't wrap my head around it. Ezra had a whole baby while I was here juggling our bills and even his mom's expenses. I was working my tail off all for a better future for us. I was giving him all of my love and support, and this is what he did to me. The whole day went by, and I was just waiting for him to get back from work. How the heck did things turn out like this? Angry doesn't even cover it. I was devastated. When Ezra finally walked in the door, I didn't waste a second. Ezra, we need to talk. I know what you've been keeping from me. What? What are you talking about? Don't play dumb, Ezra. I know about Sally and Connor. How did you find out? It doesn't matter how I found out. What matters is that you kept something this huge from me. How could you? Daisy, just listen. No, you listen. When did all of this happen? How old is Connor? Were you with me when this was going on? I need to know the truth. Ezra, the whole truth. Connor is almost two years old now. Well, me and Sally hooked up while you and I were dating. It was a mistake, a stupid one. It meant nothing. I had real feelings for you. Wow. While we were dating, you cheated on me. Did she tell you about the baby? Yeah, she did. When she found out she was pregnant, she told me she wanted to keep it and asked if I was in or not. And what did you say? Well, after that, I did see her for another three months, but then it hit me, Daisy. I realized that I loved you and that you were the one I wanted to be with, so I told her I'd be there for the kid, but that my heart was with you. So you saw her for three months while you were with me. Yeah, but that made me realize that I wanted you, and that's when I proposed to you. Wow. Let me get this straight. 
You are telling me that you proposed to me right after you were cheating on me for three months, and on top of that, you were hiding the fact that you had a child with her. You've got to be kidding me, Ezra. This is beyond immature. Oh my God, you and your shitty excuses. Just pack your bags and leave. I kicked Ezra out. He deserved it. My life felt like it had been turned upside down. I went ahead and got a divorce from him. I needed some time to heal, so I went over to my parents' place for a couple of months. They were incredibly supportive and showered me with love during that tough period. Family makes a difference in your darkest times. After spending those two months with them, I realized I needed to pick up the pieces and reconnect with my friends. My social life had taken a major hit, and while I wasn't completely over what had happened, I knew I couldn't stay in that low place forever. It's not easy bouncing back from a failed marriage. I decided it was time to start putting myself out there again. Slowly, I managed to get my life back on track. Hanging out with friends became a regular thing, and I even dipped my toes back into the dating scene. It didn't lead to much, just some disappointing dates and not much else. But I was trying. Then one day, my dad gave me a call with some surprising news. My grandma Janice from my dad's side had passed away. I used to spend a lot of time at her house when I was younger. Attending her funeral was tough, and then my dad gave me another piece of news. We went through mom's will, and if something you should know, she left you two million dollars. Oh wait, what? Two million dollars? Yeah, she thought a lot about you and always loved you. I don't even know what to say. That's a lot of money. She always cared about you a great deal. I knew she was going to do this. I was not entirely shocked. My family was well off and my grandparents were even wealthier. Being the only grandchild, I kind of knew this would happen at some point. I just didn't expect it to be this soon. After inheriting that unexpected sum, I was left with a lot of choices to consider. Suddenly, I had a huge amount of money and a whole world of possibilities laid out before me. Instead of diving into impulsive spending, I made one clear decision. I would sell my apartment and buy a house. I went ahead and signed the deal, getting myself a stunning new place. It was exciting, but it also meant I had to move out. There were still some of Ezra's things hanging around that had been untouched since he left. It was a chapter I needed to close, so I called him over. It was super weird when he showed up. We were both in this limbo of not knowing what to say. He packed his things, and just as he was making his exit, he finally broke the ice. So you're moving out, huh? Yeah, finally making the jump. Are you seeing someone new, or is it just you? It's just me. Got myself a house over on 12th Avenue. Oh nice. 12th Avenue, huh? That's some good real estate. It must have been an expensive purchase. Yeah, it's a cool spot. I got a little boost from my grandma. She passed away and left me two million dollars. Wow, seriously? Well, good for you and sorry about your grandma. Yeah, thanks. Anyway, I've got to run. Yeah, no problem. With all my stuff moved and the chapter closed, I settled into my new place. Life was looking up. Let's just say it was a pretty posh neighborhood. I made friends with my neighbors, and we used to enjoy wine together on the weekends. I even joined the local tennis club and started making some new friends. It was like a whole different upgrade. But then, one fine day, someone I never expected to face again showed up at my doorstep. I opened the door and there she was, Karen. I invited her in. I am sorry about everything that went down between us. What are you doing here, Karen? Well, I heard about your inheritance and ah, uh, condolences for your grandma. Seriously, why are you here, Karen? Daisy, let's try to put everything behind us. I want you to be a part of the family again. Are you serious right now, Karen? You want me back in your life just because I have more money? I just want you to help me out. Helping you out? What do you mean? I bought myself a car on loan as soon as I heard about what your grandma left you. Pretty expensive car, about $100,000. I needed something more comfortable, you know, for my age. Hold on a second. Are you out of your mind? Why would I even buy that for you? Who exactly are you to me? Look, I know we had our differences, but let's just keep this family together. What family? Didn't Ezra tell you we got divorced seven months ago? What? No, he didn't. He said you bought this house for Ezra and yourself. Karen, your son had a child with another woman he was hiding from me and I divorced him seven months ago. Ezra didn't tell me any of this. If you guys are not together, where has he been living all this time? I don't know. Maybe ask your son. I can't believe this. 
Well, maybe believe it. And you know what's funny? Both of you are being selfish. You're here only because you need money, just like before, and Ezra has been lying to you and the whole world about God knows what. It's not like that, Daisy. How am I going to pay for the car? You can't leave me hanging like this. Save it. I've had enough of this. Just leave, Karen. I don't want anything to do with you, your son, or your problems anymore. I basically showed Karen the door and gave her a piece of my mind. Seriously, I couldn't believe how greedy someone could be. And Ezra, man, that guy was a master liar. He'd been feeding his mom a load of BS about us being together. Like, where was he even crashing during that time? Who lies about stuff like that? I bought a house for both of us. What a joke. It's like he was playing make-believe. Ezra was acting like a kid, making up stories for his mom and who knows who else. It was just ridiculous. Later that day, I got some texts from Ezra. Hey Daisy, I'm really sorry about my mom showing up like that. Can you just leave me alone? I'm disgusted by all your lies right now. How could you even lie about this to your mom? Did you conveniently forget to mention her grandchild? I know I messed up big time. I was crashing with Sally and Connor, and I told her I was with you. I didn't want her to think how big of a screw-up I am. Wow, my mom's pushing me to help pay off her car loan. I don't know what to do. Wow, really? Begging for help right now, huh? Pathetic. Why don't you ask your make-believe family for help? Daisy, please. I messed up. I'm desperate. Ezra, I'm not your knave wife you can manipulate anymore. Deal with your own mess. Goodbye. After that exchange, I decided to block Ezra's number from my phone. It's been a while since that whole drama went down, and honestly, I've never felt more relieved. It's almost like karma is doing its thing with Karen and Ezra. I have no idea if they managed to sort out that car loan mess, but they're getting their fair share of what they deserve. They treated me terribly, and now life's throwing it back at them. As for me, I'm living a good life. Oh, and guess what? I've even met someone new. And yes, I've learned my lesson. Background checks are a must now. You know what they say, you reap what you sow. My intentions were pure while theirs, well, not so much. You get what you put out in the universe.